This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. So we have our report connected to a database. We have the selection made of the correct table of views we are wanting. We're then effectively pretty close to being able to start building our report. Now the field explorer on the right that is visible here shows our fields that are available. If your field explorer is closed, for example, and the report explorer, then you can reopen the field explorer from this icon here and it will open again. So if you inadvertently close this to try and see what you're doing, maybe, then you can reopen it to bring it back again. The field explorer can even be set to dock by floating away. At the minute, you can see the pin is down. That means it's pinned on. If we click the pin, you can see the Field Explorer then slinks out of the way. When you hover over it, it slinks back. You might prefer that to rather than closing and reopening. Personally, I find it quite annoying that it pops out and doesn't pop out, so I'm going to fix it back in place. You can even put the Field Explorer, if you grab it, like I have just there on the, on the title, I'm going to move it down to the bottom, and it will snap if you get the shape right there. So it snaps to the bottom, in which case you can then resize it. That's not really ideal because there's a lot of wasted screen space here, which is why the default is for it to be snapped to the right hand side. But you can, if you have a preference, snap it to the left hand side. Again, you grab the title and move it across to the left hand side. And when it's in the right place, it will just snap there. And then we can narrow it back up. And it will sit on the left hand side now instead of on the right. And you can do the hidey thing there as well. So it's all down to personal preference and where you like to see it. The default, obviously, is over on the right. So let's open it and lock it back on the right, where most people will be used to seeing it. So that's our field explorer. Very important because it gives us access to the fields, not only the database fields, but as we progress through, you'll see we can access formula fields, parameter fields, running total fields, and a myriad of special fields that are yet to come. In the report itself, this is our report. If I close the field explorer out of the way, we can see the width and we've seen already how we can set that width by organizing the paper size or the orientation. Each report that you have has a number of sections. We have the report header. Anything placed in this section here, the report header, will appear once and only once right at the beginning of the report. The size of the report header is adjustable just by moving that horizontal line down or up. And that's how much space will be used to display the report header on your report. The page header is, as it says, the page header. This exists at the top of every page, so anything you place in here will be at the top of every page. Perhaps column headings, perhaps logos, perhaps titles, maybe even page numbers. Again, that's the amount of space it defaults to, but we can tell it to use less space at the top of each page or more space at the top of each page. Working with the page header, and you can see it sort of wraps around, is the page footer. So this area here, again, whatever you put in there, text box with hello in, the page numbers, etc., will appear at the bottom of every page of your report. The report footer sort of banks with the report header. Anything you put in here will appear after the last little bit of data has been printed, then the report footer appears. So it's not necessarily at the foot of a page. If the last page of your report is simply two records across the top, your report footer will appear immediately after those two records and therefore won't be a footer, it's just the report end. That page will also have a page footer on it. And the most important section here, the detail section, this section repeats every record in your data. So if you connect to a thousand row spreadsheet, then you will have a thousand detail sections. Now in design, which is where we are, you only see one detail section because this is the design view. We're going to design, we want to tell it what to look like. But when you then view the data, you'll get one report header, you'll get one report footer, you'll get as many page headers as there are pages in your report, and the same for the footers. And the details, you'll get one set of details for each record. So the wider you make this, the more pages you are going to use because it needs this much space for each record in your data. The narrower you make it, the less paper it will use. Obviously, if you make it too narrow, you won't be able to read what's in there. So we have control of these sections. These are the default sections you get with a blank report. You'll see as you move through the title that you can actually add in more sections. 
You can't actually remove a section. If you don't want a section to be printed, for example, the report header, then you can hide it. We can do that by right click and hide. Or right click and suppress. At the moment, there's not a physical difference between those two, but there will be as we approach drill downs. Now in design view, it doesn't disappear. It just gets this diagonal lines within it. But in preview, there will be no report header. So that's right click and don't suppress and right click show. Any of the sections can be suppressed, even the detail section. And we'll see how that can be quite useful in summary reports. So these are the sections you are given. Our next step is to look at how we add fields to the report and decide which sections to drop those fields in, depending on the field type.